let's let's move in. We're getting into the top half here. We are. Hit me with number five. Number five is, uh, and I didn't do this on purpose, I guess now, but number five is the five card opener by Bill Abbott. Oh, five card box. I've seen uh, I've seen Bill do this. I've seen you do this. I've seen John Armstrong do I've seen this. A lot of people do. John this. has a really good take on it in his Penguin Live Act. Mm -hmm. uh, this, his second. Uh, Penguin Live with us because the the first one was all close-up stuff and the second one was was stage stuff. Yeah, and five card opener. It's real good. Is I, well, and it and this is the one trick I think in my list that slightly breaks my own rule mm -hmm. about. Uh, uh, I will have a backtrack when I. Well, let's talk about the trick. So the trick yep. is basically you come out and you have this like cute looking cardboard box. It says magic show on the front. It's clearly been written by a kid. Yeah. You, you explain that this is the first trick you ever did. You reach in the box and you pull out these five jumbo cards and you do a classic trick. That, as yep. magicians, we know is basically six, six card, card repeat, repeat, but a very, a very dialed back version of it. Yeah. Um, and the cards are going into the box. You, mm -hmm. you supposedly have five cards. You end up producing like, I don't know, 20 cards. Yeah, they go lot. in the box. And it, there's some fun things that happen with the box where it's changing. It's a, it's a super good trick that like... Yeah, and the cards disappear at the end, Yeah. right? So it's... Uh, yeah. Six card repeat has been one of those tricks forever. It's been like a white whale of mine where I've like, I've wanted to solve six card repeat. And then mm -hmm. the first time I saw his, you know, five card box, I was like, ah, Bill got there first. Well, I mean, it's... It, I mean, there's just from a from a commercial standpoint of being able to drop it into any show yep. anytime. This thing is just it's it's the size of this table. Yep. Packs flat because the cards stay in it and all that. And you get like a weird. It's like a mini illusion mm -hmm. as well at the at the top of the show. Yeah. The, the the way that he constructed the script where it's like, sometimes you get these tricks and there's going to be more of them that we talk about here mm -hmm. that are like the script is just perfect. It's, you know, it's very much like silent treatment yes. in the sense that if you are just getting into stand-up magic or you're just getting into starting to like put together a formal show, buying this trick, you can study everything that goes into it to really understand how to make a trick better script-wise, yeah. structure-wise, and then start to apply that to your own new and unique ideas. We hear a lot about making your stuff your own, yeah. and you should. 100%. 100%. However, some of these tricks are just like these ones in particular. These are these are some of the best products. It's like right? it's it's that sort of that old saying: you got to learn to walk before you can run. And like learning to walk with silent treatment, five card trick, uh, like those those are what teach you how to get there. Yes, yeah, and it, like I've seen examples of people making it their own. There's just not much to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's there's just not much. It's like not more, much farther to go. It's already been figured out. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is this is definitely one of them. Uh, pack super small. Uh, it's just something you could perform in one on stage, a little bit of a backtrack. Bill has an interesting thing in his script where you get a, it's a, um, it's like a, a chant that you get the audience to do, mm -hmm. which can continue out through your show. So that's an interesting, yeah. you know, element to be able to play with going forward if you're constructing shows. So yeah, five card box. I mean, that's, it's just in yeah. my case because nope. you never know. It's worked for kids' shows, works for everything. It's yeah. fantastic. Definitely something you can throw in when you show up and the audience is not what you thought it was going to be. Works for kids, adults, whoever. Doesn't matter. All right, let's move on. Number four. Number four is uh, a trick from Magic for Dummies. Oh, okay. Did you ever read right. that one? <laughs> uh, we're getting deep into the archives Dude, here. That's a great book. Uh, but number four is it, it's, it's a trick called You Can't Do What I Can Do. All right, we are in a rare instance where you've brought up a trick that I have no idea it's what it is. It's better known as, as, like, it's just, it's better known these days as the, it's not, it's not arm twist, but people refer to it as arm twist. Oh, or the... Or hand twist. The, like, like what David Blaine did on the street. It's not that. No? It's the trick where you come out and oh! get the entire audience to do what I, you, they, to... You can't do what you can do. Right? I, uh, I've used this as an inappropriate joke on many occasions. Yes, you have. Uh, I know you yeah. know this trick. Yeah, you don't I'm, even know where it was from, right? uh, No, I had no Magic idea where from, this is from. No, I think it's, it predates Magic from Dummies. I think it was printed in uh, Reginald Scott's The Discovery of Witchcraft. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> like it might have been. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody knows the origins of this. So no. I mean, may, maybe they'll find out in the comments here where, where yeah. it came from. Yeah, please, uh, if you know the exact <laughs> origin of this trick, jump into the comments <laughs> below and tell us where it, where it comes from. Uh, fantastic. Trick. So good. I mean, I, I don't know. I started performing this before I kind of even got it among magicians. 
Mm-hmm. And when I got among, started hanging out with magicians, I realized a lot of people don't like this trick. For yeah. some, I was like, really, why? Like, this is, a, this is one of the best tricks you can do. And you do it with nothing. So yep. you come out and you instruct the entire audience to basically do what you do. Now, there's a million, like, fun bits of business to do yep. in here. Like, there's just so much space to work with the idea of, like, people having to physically mm-hmm. mimic your actions. Yeah. But the, the trick is essentially you get everybody in, in this position mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're able to turn your hands up, right? And the entire audience can't yeah. do it, right? Um, it's a lot of fun to do because it's, you can do it for kids over mm-hmm. and over again and they just don't, don't get it. I remember the first time I experienced this trick, I was like 17 years old and I saw Terry Evanswood mm-hmm. in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee and Terry Evanswood comes out in this like nice velvet suit with rhinestones and sparkles and he does that for everyone and I, he must have done it seven or eight times and I just could never follow him and yeah. it frustrated me to no end. Um, I, I know that yeah. it's, it's definitely popped up certain places. What it's it's definitely, uh, there's a cool thing I, that I've thought about doing. I'll actually, I'll give this away to the YouTube audience if you want. Um, because of the way you get into the trick, you can hide an appearing cane in your hand. <laughs> so, so you can get into this position and uh-huh. you can make the cane appear and then it gives your audience a really nice big visual thing to watch as your hands turn upright. Mm. It's kind of like a, it's, it's something I've like played with, but uh, I just, I never, I never take my, my appearing cane anywhere. Yeah, right. Well, but it's you... definitely like a way to like make it bigger and more visual. Well, so the ways I've always used it, I, I come out to, you can use, you can put a backtrack underneath it, but it involves the entire crowd. Mm-hmm. Again, it's so cool to involve yeah. everybody in the audience, at the, especially at the top of the mm-hmm. show. Um, and then the other reason why it's so high on the list, it's kind of a, like, it's always been like a savior thing for me. Mm-hmm. As in, maybe I came out and I did a trick and... I, the audience isn't quite where I where I want them, mm-hmm. right? Before the next act, or even as a closer. And again, there's a closer video that we're going to watch. This might be on there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you're there and you're like, man, I this is I didn't get this where I wanted to go. This comes with a built-in way to get applause mm-hmm. at the end because they're mimicking what you do. So there's a great way of you know after mm-hmm. you do the trick where you can get the entire audience yeah. to applaud. It just st- for me, because you need nothing yeah. to do it, absolutely nothing. It's just always been a way of I'm on stage, I need to fix something or get applause or get the audience ready for the next thing. I can mm-hmm. immediately go into this and it just, it just solves problems. What's really cool about the effect too is that it's one of those that is, the method is not super widely known by the general public, but enough of the general public know that what it is, is that if you do it with an audience where there's a couple of knowledgeable people, and I've seen this happen, the knowledgeable people who know what's up will play along with you and then get into the position and then like rib the yeah. people who are just like, what do you mean you can't do it? I can do it. And it's it's a really, then it's sort of, a, it's not quite an instant stooge, but it's definitely, you have like built-in confederates in the audience who want to like sell it even harder, yeah. which is so much fun. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a novelty trick. I mean, it will mm-hmm. fry people, but yeah. I, man, it's, uh, man, it's useful. You can't do what I can do is is fa- and now I know the name of it, which yeah. is so great. Magic uh, for Dummies, good killer book, by the way. Let's move on. Number three. Number three is probably the most versatile trick that I ever learned to mm. do stand up, and that is the torn or restored newspaper. Oh, there's and there's so many great versions too. Now I think I, yeah, I you do. use the Gene Anderson. I do. There. So Gene is the is the guy. Yep. Right, and you can find this in his Penguin Live Act or. I would suggest getting his book, Gene Anderson, the book, which mm-hmm. is a crazy book. book. He is so he is a powerhouse yeah. of, of, of magic and a wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Torn Restored newspaper is here's a newspaper, you tear it up and boom, it's right back together. But the simplicity of the effect is just you, you can you can tailor it to any situation, yeah. any message or anything. Who's the guy whose hand was the thing? Christopher Hart. Yeah, Christopher Hart does one with a sheet of music ah. it's, it's sheet music and as he tears it the music stops and starts as he puts it together again mm, and then we, he, when he right i've seen yeah, that when he reassembles it the the music plays out of order as mm. well which is really neat well so i when i open with this mm-hmm. i will i actually do it silent silent ish mm-hmm. to music i don't know if you've ever seen me do it but i actually do it 
to oh. Billy Joel's The Stranger. I, I have seen you do that <laughs> because uh, something you don't get to see very often in some of the Penguin live acts is we do have a spotlight here. Oh, and I've seen you <laughs> do it in the spotlight. Well, I whistle the song, the, um, the beginning of it. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll get YouTube copyright if I whistle the song, right? So, uh, no, uh, yeah, I come out and I whistle the song as I do it. Mm -hmm. There's really no, it's just something I put together very early when I started performing. Yeah. And I don't really, when I do open with the Toner Restore newspaper, I do it this way or I'll talk through it, just kind of depending on what's going on in the room. Uh, but that's a testament to the versatility of this trick. Mm -hmm. There's a, I can talk through it. Yep. I, you can close with this. This is often just one of those things that I put it in my case. If I need an extra three minutes or five minutes, yep. it fits literally anywhere in the show. And I think if we're talking about great Torn and Restored newspapers, uh, a more than honorable mention goes to Faye Presto, where she pours liquid into oh, the newspaper. That was just... Tears it up. Every, restores yeah. it and then pours the liquid back out. She's just basically doing like a Gene Anderson act two with that thing. Yeah, like, I mean, it there's is. so much magic in that one routine that you should check out. Oh yeah, it's in it's in Faye Presto's live, live act. act. Yeah, yeah you can see it, but it's it's one of the best Torn and Restored newspapers. It, and it's like a real mind job too, especially when you know the different things going on and then the way she's combining them, it's yeah. so good. There's, a, there's only one other one I would mention is that, that it would, it's the Mark Mason one that- um, Oh, the, the, piece no, of, the no, no, no tear, tear yeah. Yeah, because and it, like, We've been talking about commercial things. Mm -hmm. That one has like built-in jokes yes. in it with a script that would mm -hmm. just work, right? You could go anywhere, open yeah. mic night or something, and just do this thing, yes. and, and it would, and you get some nice, you know, experience in front of a microphone. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's okay. We're closing on the top though. So it's and there's been some strong magic. So now I gotta. I'm yeah. real curious as to what you're putting at two and one. So, so let's get into two. Number two. And I, this is one of the most the tricks I've done just the most. I. I I probably tailed off on it the past couple of years for no particular reason, but it's the balloon swallow. Oh the balloon, yes, yes. The this is swallow. a classic. Yeah, uh, it's you. You inflate like a, you know, a four foot, five foot party balloon, mm -hmm. and then you, you swallow it, the whole thing. And I, I will give uh, a little bit of credit um, when people have asked me. Like, hey, I want to do the balloon swallow. Where can I find out how to do it? Yeah. There are two resources that I give them to. One is uh, Amberlynn and Ryan Stock, I believe, talk about it in yeah, their live I think lecture. They do, yeah. uh, and they give some really good information. And actually, one of the best resources is your Penguin Live Lecture One. Well, thank you. Because you go into deep detail the on the specific method and the best way to hide it. Because I used to do it in a way where your mouth ends up full of stuff and then, like getting rid of it. <laughs> but you helped you do you do a really good job teaching the way to do the balloon swallow where the final product is very small and very tiny in your mouth sure. so that you can really get away with a lot and it's more convincing yeah i know i th it's it's interesting when it comes down to like the fine points of this 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 thing yeah, it's a right? it's a dumb thing that should not have fine points but they it really, really are important to make it look good now i i the i, I when i I used to perform at Universal Studios. I did a magic show there from mm -hmm. 2010 to 2013. Yep. And I did like 13,000 shows there mm -hmm. in that time period. This trick was one of the things that I would often do. I didn't do it every show, but I probably have done this trick seven to 10,000 times, I That's, would say, which yeah. is insane to think about. It's, it's a lot um, of balloons. So it's a perfect illusion. Uh, mm -hmm. if you, you know, I'm sure there's clips of this happening on, on the screen right mm -hmm. now. It's a perfect illusion. It's really good. It really, really is. It's the best way that I've ever found to get attention. Yeah. Now, that might not be attention you necessarily want, <laughs> um, but uh, and, and that's yeah. probably why I don't do it as much, because mm -hmm. I've just been looking for less attention lately. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. It, man, for... There's there's some things to consider character-wise if you're going to get into this type of trick. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, it's, a, it's a solid geek trick. It's a solid comedy trick. Uh, I come out, music's banging loud. Yeah. You know, there's a balloon. It's colorful. What is mm -hmm. he doing? Is he putting that in his mouth? Oh my God! Is he? He's yeah. not swallowing this. Like it's just a way to open the show. There's an interesting point with the trick where everyone thinks it's a dumb trick, and then I think it's about the two-thirds mark <laughs> where they're like. 
where is that going? Yeah, now in the Penguin Live lecture, I, talk, I really talk about the structure of why this is great and how to actually make it play as a big opener, right? It is a trick with structure and yeah. that, that a lot of people don't approach with structure. And, right. And it, you need to approach it with structure to. to get all of the pot, to milk every piece out well, of it. Well, you're going to leave people on, like, again, a goal of a good opener here is to get people like, well, that was like mm -hmm. excited. But if you do this incorrectly, you can leave people with a feeling of exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Like, what now, right? Yeah. So it's important to think about, this, this one's got some, for so, like a mm -hmm. simple trick, it's got a lot of interesting things when it comes to what's the audience thinking, how do I resolve that feeling that they might be feeling, and mm -hmm. you know, so there's, it's taken a long time to get it there, and I'm not sure that I've ever even solved it. I've probably come mm -hmm. as close as I think I can to yeah. it, but um, I've just done it a lot. And I think it, maybe it works for me because it's just a very unexpected for a guy like me yeah. type of thing to do. Uh, but it's served me very well. Over yeah, the when years. you watch a guy in a custom suit swallow <laughs> a balloon, it definitely, you go, I, what's going on? Well, one of my good mentors, John Eakin, mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he performed this. And mm -hmm. he's like this, the, the friendliest ambassador type guy for a cruise ship, right? Like, <laughs> great suit, great tan, great hair, comes out and yeah. I do this. I do believe he closed with it, which I, I have thoughts on as well but um yeah balloon swall opener it's been one of my uh, one of my go-to's for a long time all right uh that brings us to your number one opener my number one opener i think i already know what this is yeah you see me do it a lot yeah, yeah, yeah hit me with your number one my number one opener is something i committed to probably and i always felt stupid for not committing to it sooner um and that is uh, the the whirling card um, it's, I know what's going on right now is that a lot of people on the YouTube uh, link right now, they were hovering with their mouse over the thumbs up button and they just immediately went oh, over to the happened? thumbs down. <laughs> uh, but you, I think that you need to not give this video a thumbs down and to give it 11 thumbs up because of the work that you've done on it sure. that makes it a really strong opener. Yeah, again, this goes right back to Universal. Yep. We did this in the show there. Thousands and, of times. And it was the closer there, which yeah. it's interesting. Uh, this is why I was never opening with it because mm -hmm. my brain was like, it's a closer in your head, but like, there's no way to do it mm -hmm. uh, as a closer in your, there is, but th you just wouldn't do it mm -hmm. outside of the show that we did at Universal Studios. I, once I realized that this is a perfect opener, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is great because um, you come out, loud music, and it's just impossible visual magic, nonstop. Boom, 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 boom. It's just moment after moment after moment after moment. And it's it's one of those things that you need to practice it. And, oh yeah. And you need to you need to learn to make the cards yourself because when you most people's first encounter with this is in Universal Studios or like a tourist yeah, magic or shop. Yeah, Las Vegas, uh, yeah. Houdini's Magic Shop. Yeah. Where you, know. you you see a guy doing it and you're like, oh wow, like I want to be able to do that, and they sell you a kit, and then you go home and it doesn't work, and that's because that guy has done it literally every day for 10 years. Yes. And, and it doesn't take long to get good at it, but you do have to do it over and over again and get used to the game. But that's the thing that people are forgetting is the feeling that you got when you first saw it. Yeah. You're like, what the hell? Like, yeah. This is amazing, right? Regardless of how it works or whatever, if you do it well, it blows everybody away. Yeah. You know, they're just like, the, it's a display of skill. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is like a, a, a magical trick by any means anymore. This is a show off thing that yeah. I'm doing. Uh, but it, it, I'm, again, tying right back into the what I think makes a good opener is it's not so much about, you know, coming out and doing the biggest, brightest piece of magic. Mm -hmm. I just need to get the show going, mm -hmm. right? So the music, and then like, there's just stuff happening constantly. Mm -hmm. I also transition after that into a floating bill, yes. which I use to set up, you know, for other parts on the show. Um, and again, I, I just kind of switched over to this, but I was doing the floating cigarette as an opener for a mm -hmm. long time prior to this. Yeah. Just never had a lot of success for, with it, and we were on the decline of yeah. cigarettes being able to be used anywhere, and it was just more risk and a little bit more difficult for me to pull off mm -hmm. this thing you know even if even if something was to go wrong i i'm just more than capable of correcting it and uh and getting it back on track i know some really good resources for this are i think your first i penguin talk about live it event. on the first penguin live lecture yeah. and then uh if you ever see us at a max event you've got a wonderful set of lecture notes the whirling card and the archangel kit 
uh, which is really good. Oh, if, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will uh, also another one that I love uh, his work on is Adam Elbaum. Yes. His Penguin oh, Live lecture. Absolutely. So good. And you know, uh, Chris Randall's Penguin Live lecture as well, where he mm -hmm. talks about um, these are all variations, man. When yeah. you start going down this path of of, of the um, the way this works, it's and it's definitely one of those things that if you are in an area where you can talk to a magician who works a pitch shop, like they're mm. uh, they're an untapped resource for this because I know you did the research and. It really most of the modern moves for the whirling car. All the modern moves came out of like Houdini's Me? basically yeah. uh, in the the late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah. That's where it started becoming the high flying thing. Prior to that, it was all it was really treated as a gag. Yeah. Um, like Billy McComb did it uh, as a gag, where he just kind of throw it off. And um, it, it, there's a lot of history, not a lot of history mm. of it. Yeah. Um, the way that works is actually a pretty modern thing surprisingly yeah. yeah and uh yeah we have kind of the the last two decades to thank for the way that it looks currently well the whirling card is i, I can totally see why it's your number one in openers by the way uh these are just nick's personal uh yes. ideas if there's any sort of openers that you think that we may have missed or that you think are better or maybe that you want to reorder nick's because uh, as we all know uh the the taiwan on should be much higher uh, in my opinion. Uh, let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, and I need more material, so please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. You can actually, you can find out most of the tricks that we talked about. You can find them at penguinmagic.com. Uh, my name is Eric Tate. Thanks to Nick Lacapo for joining me for this top 10. We'll see you next time.